Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Dr. Barkis of Thalmology Tutorials. We had a 3 year old child who sustained trauma to her left eye. So it was an open globe injury involving the cornea as well as sclera. So there was a horizontal tear extending from almost uh, 5 to 6 millimeters away from the limbus nasally to the same extent in the temporally, okay, involving both the sides of sclera along with the cornea. So the primary repair of the tear was done and the child was put on the repaired medications. After 15 days or so, the child came back with the redness and little pain or discomfort in the right eye. So this is the scenario of sympathetic ophthalmitis, where a person will sustain an injury to one eye. It could be either surgical trauma or non-surgical trauma, followed by there will be inflammation in the other eye. Okay, that is called as the sympathetic ophthalmitis. Though it is a rare disease, but one should have the knowledge about the sympathetic ophthalmitis because, because high index of suspicion as well as early and prompt treatment of this sympathetic ophthalmitis can preserve the vision of the patient. Sometimes the vision of the only seeing eye. Okay, so that is the importance of sympathetic ophthalmitis. Without much delay, let's begin our video on sympathetic ophthalmitis. And I will be discussing this topic under the headings of the definition of sympathetic ophthalmitis, what is the proposed pathogenesis of sympathetic ophthalmitis, the clinical features, as well as the management aspect of sympathetic ophthalmitis. So we can define sympathetic ophthalmitis as rare bilateral disease involving pan uveitis because of exposure of the previously immune privileged ocular antigens which will ultimately lead to bilateral autoimmune response. So if I have to dissect and explain this definition, well, as I told this is one of the rare diseases but it is bilateral means there is one eye which is exposed that is injured eye and the other eye which is showing the response that is called a sympathizing eye. So it is a bilateral disease. There is pan uveitis involving all the parts of the VL tissue that is, is iris ciliary body as well as the correct. So there is pan uveitis. This occurs because of the exposure of the antigens which are present in the eye which were not previously exposed to the immune system of a person. So whenever these antigens are exposed for the first time the body will show the antibody response to this antigen which will ultimately lead to the inflammation in both eyes okay so there is bilateral autoimmune response in both eyes so rare bilateral pan uveitis which occurs because of exposure of previously immune privileged ocular antigen leading to bilateral autoimmune response so this is the definition of sympathetic ophthalmitis so i told this is the rare disease so it is the incidence of the sympathetic ophthalmitis it is almost 0.19 to 0.7 percent following penetrating ocular injuries 0.007 to 0.015% following intraocular surgeries. If you consider the sympathetic ophthalmitis as a whole, the penetrating injuries will contribute up to 55 to 65% of all of the sympathetic ophthalmitis cases, whereas the intraocular surgeries will contribute up to 25 to 40% of the sympathetic ophthalmitis cases. So the sympathetic ophthalmitis is seen after the penetrating ocular injury. If you come to the ocular surgeries which can lead to sympathetic ophthalmitis, sir, the vitrectomy stands first followed by the cyclodestructive procedures. It can occur even following the simple cataract extraction as well as the RD surgery and even the trap surgery. So the next question is when the sympathetic ophthalmitis will occur or when we should suspect the sympathetic ophthalmitis following the trauma. This sympathetic ophthalmitis can occur from days to even years after the surgery or the trauma. So it can occur even after 5 days of surgery to almost 66 years following the surgery. So we have to have high index of suspicion whenever the other eye presents with the symptoms of pan uveitis. 70% of these cases occur usually in the 3 months of the period after surgery. And so coming to the pathogenesis of sympathetic ophthalmitis. So there are so many theories regarding the pathogenesis of the sympathetic ophthalmitis. One of the accepted theories is the role of the T-cell mediated delayed hypersensitivity reaction. Okay. So the pathogenesis involves the T-cell mediated delayed hypersensitivity reaction. So how it happens? So first there is trauma followed by the release of the antigens. The antigens which are blamed for this are the retinal S antigen as well as interphotoreceptor binding proteins. So once these antigens are released, these are drained by the subconjunctival lymphatics to the regional lymphatics. So the spleen will show the response by producing the CD4 cells. So the CD4 cell response is present in the initial phases of sympathetic ophthalmitis followed by the CD8 cell response which is nothing but delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction. Okay. So there is limited role for this B cell response in the pathogenesis of sympathetic ophthalmitis. So this is one of the accepted theories of the pathogenesis in the sympathetic ophthalmitis. There are two words which are frequently used in sympathetic ophthalmitis that is 
the exciting eye or the inciting eye, then the sympathizing eye. The eye which sustains trauma could be penetrating injury or the ocular surgery is called as the exciting eye. The other eye, the contralateral eye is called as the sympathizing eye. Okay. What are the clinical features? First, the symptoms. So, in the exciting eye, the patient will have more inflammation. That is, it is increased redness and pain in the exciting eye. In the sympathizing eye, the inflammation is little less. That is, patient will again present with the pain and redness in the other eye also, but it is milder compared to the exciting eye. But the patient will have decreased vision, especially for the near vision because of the loss of accommodation. So, this is one of the ways to monitor these patients who can develop the sympathetic ophthalmitis or who have sustained the trauma to the other eye. If you instruct the patients, like if you find difficulty in reading, then you please come back. This one sentence can help in early detection of sympathetic ophthalmitis. So, these are the symptoms. So, when we come to the signs, the patients will present with the signs of eviatis. So, patient will have the ciliary or the circumciliary congestion followed by AC reaction that is AC cells and flare, mutton fat KPs. All those signs of anterior eviatis will be present in both exciting and the sympathizing eye. If you come to the posterior segment findings, the patients may have the vitreous cells. Okay, that is the posterior vitreous cells. There can be mild papillitis, even the serous retinal detachment and the coronal thickening. One of the characteristic findings is the dilent fixed nodules in the posterior segment. Okay, it is, but it is not pathognomic. It can be seen in other conditions as well. So, these will appear as small discrete yellowish infiltrates between the Bruch's membrane as well as the RPE. So, these are usually situated in the mid periphery or in the periphery. If you look at the histology of these dialin fixed nodules, it is nothing but the nodular aggregates of the lymphocytes as well as the epithelial cells which have engulfed the retinal pigment epithelial cells. Okay, so that is dialin fixed nodules. The extraocular findings we have alopecia, vitiligo, dysacusis, as well as the pleocytosis in the CSF. Then coming to the investigation, if you do the fundus fluorescent angiography or the initial phases of the disease, you will show hypofluorescence because of these dialin fuchs nodules. Because of these dialin fuchs nodules, the fluorescence will not be highlighted. So, there is hypofluorescence. Whereas in the later stages of the disease, because of the pooling of this dye in the RPE detached area, the patients will have hyperfluorescence. And if you look at the histopathological features of the sympathetic ophthalmitis, there is diffuse non-necrotic granulomatous inflammation involving all the parts of the uveal tract. Characteristically, it will spare the chorea capillaries and there is no involvement of retina in case of sympathetic ophthalmitis. So, once you are diagnosed and confirmed, you are diagnosed of sympathetic ophthalmitis. Next, moving on to the management of sympathetic ophthalmitis. So, the first thing which comes to our mind is the enucleation. Suppose the patient is having no vision or pale negative status in the exciting eye or the traumatized eye, you can go ahead with the enucleation to prevent the sympathetic ophthalmitis in the other eye. But if the patient is having some vision in the traumatized eye, it is always better to suture the eye or do the primary repair of the traumatized eye and leave it alone. Because there are so many treatment options available now to treat the sympathetic ophthalmitis. So even having some vision in the other eye is also useful for the patient. So don't go ahead with the enucleation if the patient is having some vision in the traumatized eye. The next question is whether we have to do enucleation once there is sympathetic ophthalmitis in the other eye. There is no point in doing enucleation once there is sympathetic ophthalmitis in the other eye because the pathogenesis has already occurred and you are not intervening at that process. So, there is no use of doing enucleation but some people say that even enucleation can be done within two weeks of onset of sympathetic ophthalmitis. That is you can remove the exciting guy because it will lead to an elder course of uh, sympathetic ophthalmitis in the other eye. So, in the other medical management, we have the corticosteroids, which is the mainstay of treatment. Here, the corticosteroids are given in the dosage of 1 to 1.5 mg per kg per day. That is, the prednisolone is what we prefer. There is improvement in the symptoms and signs of the sympathetic ophthalmitis. You can reduce the dosage by 5 mg per week. Okay. Followed by the maintenance therapy of this prednisolone in the dosage of 5 to 10 mg per day. Okay. So, this is about the steroids. But in some cases, you will have to prefer immunosuppressants over the steroids. Whenever the steroids are not uh, effective alone or if there is too high dosage of steroids which is necessary, whenever there is contraindication from the patient like patient is suffering from diabetes or the hypertension and there is relapses, once you reduce the dosage of the steroids, then you will have to go for immunosuppressants. So in the immunosuppressants, we have cyclosporine which is given in the dosage of 3 to 5 mg per kg per day 
uh, and whenever the patient is on cyclosporine please do watch the renal functions as well as the blood pressure it will improve the visual acuity to almost 612 or better okay the next is the azathioprine which is given in the dosage of 1 to 2 mg per kg per day and whenever the patient is on azathioprine please do watch for please do watch for the blood counts okay and the third option is the chlorambucil which is also seen useful in the treatment of sympathetic ophthalmitis and even the biologicals are used in the sympathetic ophthalmitis treatment that is anti tumor necrosis factor agents like infliximab and adalimumab are showing promising results in the sympathetic ophthalmitis treatment so what are the dds of sympathetic ophthalmitis bkh that is vocal energy hardas syndrome lens induced uveitis sarcoidosis tuberculosis and even the infective end of thalmitis are the dds for sympathetic ophthalmitis so in spite of all these treatment measures there can be complications in the sympathetic ophthalmitis which include the cataract formation there can be glaucoma even there can be exudative rd as well as the chorioretinal scarring so these are the complications of sympathetic ophthalmitis so hope this video on sympathetic ophthalmitis is useful to all of you if you like my videos please do subscribe to my channel press the bell icon for further notifications and please do leave your valuable comments